Martin, if I'd had a pen, I would be wearing the red sock. <laughs> and thank you, Sister Cynthia, for that wonderful introduction. The term inaugural or inauguration commonly means the beginning of something. Hidden in this Latin word is the Roman term augur. In this case, <clears throat> the person who could read and interpret the auguries, inauguration, or specifically, the pattern of flying birds. This was supposed to reveal what was coming. Thus, an inauguration marks not simply the beginning of something, but it takes its name from the auguries themselves. That moment when people try to uh, read where things are headed. Where is this new person going? Where is she, he likely to take us? Is it a place we want to go? If we had an augury, we might have asked, what does it mean to be inaugurated president one day after the Ides of March and the day before St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> American higher education typically inaugurates a new president within a month or two of his or her taking office, a time so early in the person's new tenure that there's been little time to get to know him or her. So there very well may be a need for auguries to read the future. But some institutions, such as, Saint, such as Holy Names, are now scheduling inaugurations six to eight months after the president has taken office. By that time, the new president and the community have begun to take each other's measure, avoiding altogether the need for auguries. And by the way, my publisher wishes to thank the HNU community for the slight uptick in the sales of my last book, Mythic Trickster Figures, following the announcement of my appointment. In hindsight, it probably would have been easier to have just interpreted the bird auguries rather than having to read my book. <laughs> Indeed, our first seven months together have been a busy time for everyone. Sisters, students, faculty, staff, alumni, trustees, regents, friends, and this president, all getting to know each other. We've been aided in this process by the drafting and redrafting, discussing and rediscussing a plan to take us forward, completing our current strategic plan, and leading us into another planning process. More on this in a moment. We at Holy Names University are blessed to be felicitously located at the confluence of rich, spiritual, cultural, and altruistic traditions. How did such an exceptional enterprise begin? As you've heard, 143 years ago in 1868, six holy, enterprising, and courageous women, sisters of the holy names of Jesus and Mary, came from Montreal, Canada, boarded the Ocean Queen in New York City, journeyed to the Atlantic side of Panama, traveled by rail to the Pacific side, boarded the Golden Age, and arrived in San Francisco on May 10th. Welcomed by and resting with the Sisters of Mercy in San Francisco, a week later on May 18th, they arrived in Oakland, California, a thriving metropolis of 8,000 people. Here on the shores of Lake Merritt, Sister Mary Anthony La Chapelle, the first superior, all of 21 years of age. And the other five sisters, Sister Mary Salome Martin, Sister Mary Marceline Bernard, Sister Mary Seraphin de Rome, Sister Mary Celestine O'Leary, and Sister Mary Cyril Metras moved into their new home. Sister Seraphin recalled, can you imagine our delight at the beauty of the scene unfolded before us, from snow and ice to the unfolding of spring, fragrant with the scent of roses, bathed in sunlight, and made joyous with the song of birds. That evening, sitting on the floor, because they lacked chairs, this initial Holy Names community had their first, quote, supper of bread, eggs, and tea prepared at the grate in the community room. They celebrated with strawberries with fresh cream provided by their host, Father King, and, quote, 
all felt themselves to be truly in their own home. As many of you know, the sisters re-celebrate the same moment every May on our Founders Day when they serve strawberries and cream to the entire community. Of course, we now have chairs. <laughs> Over the next 90 years, Holy Names grew and prospered, and by 1957, the students had outgrown the first campus. So the sisters sold the Lake Merritt property to Henry Kaiser so that he might construct the Kaiser Building. This enabled Holy Names to move to a modern campus here in the Oakland Hills. In 1971, as you heard, we went co-ed, and in 2004, we became a university. Now, over 140 years later, Holy Names has evolved into a vibrant co-educational academic community of over 1,200 students, consisting of more than 700 undergraduates, both traditional and adult, and more than 400 graduate students. 50% of our students are first generation in their family to go to college, consistently ranked in the top five universities in the West for the most diverse student body. Holy Names empowers this student body for leadership and service in a global setting. We proudly declare that we have been liberating the spirit in Oakland since 1868. Now, if there's anybody paying attention in the, um, in the booth up there, I'd like you to bring up the house lights just for a second. And if not, we'll carry on. Thank you very much. I have a hunch that might be Luis. Thank you, Luis. Let me introduce to you someone whose family is a living embodiment of the Holy Name's legacy in Oakland. Carla Cravenaris. Will you stand, Carla? Carla? There she is. There she is. You can stay standing, Carla. Let me just, just for four sentences here. Carla and I met at the campus Thanksgiving meal. Carla is the sixth member of her family to attend Holy Names. Like others in her family, Carla has pursued several degrees from Holy Names. For her BA, she designed her own joint major in philosophy and political science. At the moment, she's working on her master's in our SOFIA program in wisdom literature. The fa this family tradition began with Carla's aunt Le Leontine Alexander Miles, who began her studies at the Lake Merritt campus. And Carla and I are proud to announce that the seventh member of her family has just been accepted as a freshman for the fall, Ms. Taylor Austin. As many of you know, Holy Names is a place that I've followed closely since my family first started to live in the East Bay, courtesy of Brother Mel, in 1990. What impressed me from the start was the spirit of radical hospitality, diversity, and social justice. Based upon a deep belief that we're all brothers and sisters under God's parenthood. Accordingly, I am thrilled and delighted to be inaugurated as the 17th president of Holy Names University. We are rooted in three master traditions. We are committed to the full development of each person's full potential. In this way, each graduate can become not only a whole person, but a vital contributor to the common good of the world, the United States, the Bay Area, and particularly our front yard, the city of Oakland. The first of these three master traditions centers upon the liberal arts, that is, the arts that mentor and free the human spirit. They include such empowering abilities as critical thinking, empathy, persuasive communication, leadership, and altruism. With the Stoics, we believe that seeking to know the underlying patterns or laws or logics of such fields of knowledge as literature, philosophy, sociology, psychology, business, nursing, religious studies, and so forth, prepares us to use those areas of knowledge for good. Critical to this process are teachers who are mentors. First use of the word mentor comes from Homer's Odyssey. In Odysseus's absence, his son Telemachus grows in wisdom and grace and becomes increasingly concerned about what he should do for his mother 
Penelope, who is being uh, courted by prospective suitors, hoping their husband will not return. Two figures appear to him, Mentor and Mentez. And when they leave, he's filled with the Spirit of God, and he knows what he must do. It's then that he discovers that Mentor and Mentes are godly guises for Athena, the goddess of wisdom, civilization, warfare, strength, strategy, crafts, justice, and skill. Forming a second master tradition, Roman Catholicism embraces and celebrates the profound goodness and sacredness of all creation, particularly human beings. Or as St. Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, Egypt, and a doctor of the church put it, God became human so that humans might become God. At holy names, we revere the divine spark in each of our students and in each member of this community. Roman Catholicism also believes that there is a positive and synergistic relationship between the beliefs of faith and the discoveries of reason. Thus, to paraphrase St. Thomas Aquinas, there can be no inherent conflict between the beliefs of faith and the discoveries of reason. If there appears to be a conflict, it can only be a temporary one that occurs because either faith or reason or both are not yet being done properly. But if we look for models of mentoring, we need to look no farther than Jesus and Mary. What a marvelous mutual mentoring occurred between them. Mother and son, each leading, each learning, each pulling the other along, heart to heart, hand in hand. The third master tradition stems from the core values of the Sisters of Holy Names. This ethos, or charism, embodies a commitment to liberating the spirit of each person within the Holy Names family, most especially students, and also everyone who gives dedicated service. Recently, I met a rabbi named Shelley, and he said to me, Bill, it is this very familial quality at Holy Names University that is so distinct about Holy Names. This is the very spirit that is absent in so much of our modern world. Here, students are liberated and transformed, discovering their brotherhood and sisterhood, gaining cultural competency that allow them to understand, relate, and work together as teams across cultural diversity, and most importantly, become passionate about working for social justice. Social justice goes well beyond acts of charity that are necessary and help people for the moment because it focuses on the underlying social and economic causes, such as ignorance, or social structures that create and perpetuate poverty. And for models of mentoring within the sisters, we need only look to the foundress, Blessed Marie Rose de Roche, or to Sister Veronica of the Crucifix, who mentored Sister Mary Anthony by letter from Canada, or to the Sisters of Holy Names University, who have mentored each other, and with grace and good humor, continue to mentor students, faculty, staff, and presidents, nudging us towards enlightenment and love. Thanks to the energetic and effective leadership of my predecessor and friend and mentor, Sister Rosemarie Nassif, this university has made impressive strides with successive years of climbing enrollments, financial stability, and fundraising successes. Building upon this solid foundation, Holy Names is well poised to take the steps to achieve its next level of excellence. As we plan over the, for growth over the next decade, the university needs to invest in its personnel, its programs, its facilities, and its infrastructures. At the same time, we need to assure our long-term viability, and we must grow our endowment to ensure a permanent source of income. With this in mind, as mentioned earlier, after six months of intensive conversations and consultations about where Holy Names needs to go next, 13 days ago, our Board of Trustees, led by Chairman Ron Rosequist, approved a community-based plan entitled Next Steps. Today, I'm delighted to share with you a brief summary of the eight initiatives that compose this plan. First, gaining greater visibility through increased civic engagement and community outreach. 
Holy Names University has a visibility challenge. Despite our many successes and our impressive alumni, unlike Cheers, the Bay Area is not a place where everyone knows our name. <laughs> Others know our name but have no idea where we are in Oakland. We propose to gain more visibility, not only through improved branding and marketing, but through more concerted, viable, civic engagement and community outreach. This intensive effort will begin tomorrow when our students, faculty, and staff will have a service day where we will go and clean up Lake Merritt, the very place where Holy Names College and University began. Our broader plan calls for a wide range of significant actions. For example, we are drafting a system of articulation agreements with local Catholic and public high schools, which will assure that if a high school student successfully takes a prescribed list of courses, they can be admitted to Holy Names University or other institutions of higher learning. We're seeking funding for a Holy Names University Urban Survey Center that would conduct scientific surveys and studies of economic, social, and educational issues in Oakland and the Bay Area. We're asking faculty, staff, and students to share on our website the vast array of voluntary work that they already do in this area. And one final example. Building on the history of economic summits here at the university, I'm pleased to announce that we will be hosting a series of CEO breakfasts on campus that will feature prominent business and nonprofit leaders sharing their wisdom about innovation, entrepreneurship, and strategic thinking. Two, codify our student success model with first generation students and share it more widely. As you know, 50% of our students are first in their family to go to college. Our plan calls for us as a university to study our success, codify the model, add to it, and generally improve it. In this way, not only can we do an even better job with our first generation students, but we can also share an effective model with others and they, so that they might benefit from it. For these students to succeed in college, they typically need not only strong financial support, but deeply engaged academic advising, personal tutoring, and other significant community support to develop their academic competency and their metacognitive skills, a fancy word that simply means their ability to know how to learn, their ability to learn how to learn. Three, strengthen our bilateral relationship with the Sisters of Holy Names. It's critical to strengthen our core values and ethos by renewing and deepening our connections with the Sisters of Holy Names. In consultation with the Sisters on the staff and faculty here, and other sisters in this province, we propose a variety of activities and a major endowment fund which can finance these activities on a permanent, ongoing basis. These activities include creating a visiting sister fellowship that will allow sisters active elsewhere to be in residence for a period of time at Holy Names, creating opportunities for sisters to address and inform this community about core values, encouraging students and others to consider joining the sisters, and fostering partnerships with the Sisters Los Gatos community for off-campus programs. Efforts will be made to educate all of us in the core values. We'll have an annual symposium on social justice and diversity. We'll have an orientation for existing and new employees. We'll have coffee and lunch discussions as we do already for key values, publishing an updated history of the university, publishing a prayer book of classic and modern prayers, and deepening appreciation of our commitment to social justice. In collaboration with the province leadership, we want to sponsor an effort to capture the oral history of sisters attached to and who have retired from the university. In addition, the campus can be used as a powerful symbol of core values by increased use of historic photographs, religious art, creating a center for spirituality and applied values, creating an archive for the oral histories, increasing the use of the web and the internet to celebrate our accomplishments, and agreeing that any significant construction will have at least 1% of its budget allocated for focusing on the sisters' heritage at this university. Fourth, increase our faculty and staff development and numerical presence. The ability of Holy Names faculty and staff to educate students to become effective agents for social justice, diversity, and equality is a key element for our success. We need to make provision for professional and personal development such development ensures that people are less likely to burn out 
or become disengaged, but rather grow in wisdom and grace. A recent survey here revealed the nature of the type of development and community which the faculty and staff value. This has been further refined with discussions with both staff and faculty. Activities can include workshops on essential skills as co conflict management. Do we have conflict? <laughs> Are we human? Time management, core values, building community. To establish a permanent source of funding for this effort, we're proposing a significant endowment. There also needs to be careful addition of staff and faculty. This will have to be done, as you know, in conjunction and coordination with planned program growth, especially for academic programs, and particularly for graduate programs. For example, this fall, we will add an undergraduate accounting major, a certificate in vocal pedagogy, and a certificate in trauma and spirituality. Five, enhance our academic excellence, library, and technological infrastructures. Academic excellence is directly dependent upon the quality of the faculty. Accordingly, significant resources will also be developed, devoted to the improvement of teaching as well as the improvement of scholarly knowledge and research. Thus, we will increase the amount of release times for scholarship, support for scholarly travel, and startup funds for new faculty. Student learning will be enhanced by additional support for writing across the curriculum, mathematics competency, the Freshman Connections Project, Cushing Library, and technological infrastructures. For students and faculty alike, Libraries are the second most important facility in university selection by incoming freshmen. As our exciting and evolving plans for the library become more refined, major physical and programmatic improvements will be funded out of operational budget surpluses. Integrating technology into the educational process and university operations is essential to our growth and continued success. Current and prospective students as well as faculty and staff I expect us and they themselves to have currency in technology, that it's technology that's highly available and well supported. Most students today expect their classes to be supplemented by online materials, hybrid classes, those part, partly face-to-face -face and partly distance learning, web conferencing, and so forth, contribute to all of our improvements in knowledge. Lecture capture, that is providing digital copies of class lectures has been shown to increase class attendance. As we well know, costs of keeping up to date with technology are high. Thus the, trust, thus, the trustees have authorized a commitment of 1% of this year's tuition raise to fund technology. In addition, we will seek to fund a permanent technology endowment for the continuous improvement of technology infrastructure. Sixth, strengthen and expand our physical campus. The physical core of this campus, not this building, the physical core of most of this campus was built in 1957. Key systems such as the centralized boilers, fire alarms, mm -hmm. and other systems poorly function and need to be replaced. In addition, as the recent Ira Fink master plan study pointed out, there's a need for a facility at the front of campus which could house admissions, marketing, and other offices as a welcome point for visitors and prospective students. There are inefficiencies associated with having only a single entrance and single exit gate at the front campus. We need to create a third gate so we can facilitate the automatic entrance for community members. There needs also to be a wayfinder map board just inside the entrance and improve signage throughout the campus. Fortunately, two gifts from the SOTA Foundation will help us underwrite the redesign of the campus entrance. With the addition of athletics and particularly our proposal to join NCAA, our sports programs have exceeded our modest facilities and present a critical need, particularly for field sports such as soccer and softball. I think it's so nice of the basketball teams to clap. I really do, thank you. <laughs> Currently, these teams need to practice and play their games at other rented facilities, often at significant distance from the university. Holy Names needs to begin finding a permanent home for many of its athletic programs. Initially, we proposed to purchase some three plus acres off campus for one field. Seven, expand our revenues. A primary way for Holy Names University to gain more discretionary funds is to increase the annual revenues produced by academic and other programs. Because of the economic needs of undergraduate students, 50, 50 cents of every tuition dollar that we receive is used for financial aid. 
Graduate students having completed at least one degree generally do not have the same range of need for support services that first generation undergraduates do. Thus, besides faculty costs, the attendant support costs for graduate programs are considerably less. At the same time, we need to be responsive to special needs of certain graduate programs. For example, our faculty are currently finding that some graduate students have significant tutorial needs. I'm asking, the faculty, excuse me, I'm asking that the faculty consider additional graduate programs such as a master's in social justice, a master's in social entrepreneurship, an executive MBA, an MBA in nonprofit management, and an MA in logistics, and I'm sure they will think of even better ideas than these. A number of new non-credit but revenue producing programs can be initiated. I spoke about a CEO breakfast. We can have, I would love to see us develop a program for economic education for Oakland families. We've spoken about an annual symposium on topics such as social justice and diversity. Eight, initiate our first comprehensive campaign for endowment programs and capital needs. Given these initiatives, given this critical need for additional resources, I'm pleased to announce that the Board of Trustees has approved Holy Names University to begin to plan for our first comprehensive campaign. We've had successful capital campaigns before to build or remodel parts of the campus. However, we have never had a comprehensive campaign that includes capital needs, program needs, and endowment. We believe that endowment will be the greatest portion of this campaign and the greatest benefit to the long sustainability of Holy Names. Why? Because it establishes permanent funding that will grow over time. Colleges and universities that generally have the largest endowments in the United States are those which are Protestant or began as Protestant and are now independent. Many of these, like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Williams, began in the 1600s or 1700s. Early on, their founders saw that endowments were the only way that they could afford to educate students. For centuries, Catholic institutions could survive without an economic endowment because they had a human endowment, large, dedicated religious orders. After Vatican II, when the size of religious orders began to decrease, Catholic institutions began to employ lay teachers at market prices, well, to be honest, below market prices, but above prices for religious orders. And at that point, Catholic institutions began to discover the need for economic endowments. We are now beginning to consult our friends, our supporters, regarding the size and shape of such a comprehensive campaign. We, we want to dream, but we also want to be realistic. And we're counting on your advice, counsel, and support in the many months ahead. We are committing ourselves to these initiatives so that Holy Names can fulfill its most basic commitment to free the human spirit in a familial context, empower graduates to work for the common good, and create other places where other people and communities can come fully alive as the Holy Names community does. In this way, with God's grace and your support, we can all ensure the Holy Names will be able to continue to liberate the spirit in Oakland and the world for generations to come. At the reception to follow, I hope you'll have a few minutes to view a short iMovie that provides an overview of the history of Holy Names' commitment to the common good and social justice. I would also urge you to find a way to keep in your prayers and to support our suffering Japanese sisters and brothers devastated by earthquakes, tsunamis, and nuclear disasters. Thank you so much for coming. I look to see you at the reception. God bless. <laughs>